Hey guys, Dosletter Magic here, and I figured I'd make a quick video explaining contraptions from the new Unstable set. It's going to be coming up pretty soon. So if you want to draft it or play it uh, later casually or whatever, you're going to need to know how contraptions work. And it looks complicated, but it's really not once you kind of see somebody explain it and uh, see it in action, which is why I've got Photoshop open. I mean, just look at these amazing frame rates. That is exactly what you want to use for um, video animations. So first off, before you even start the game, you're going to want to build a deck, like a separate side deck, of uh, just contraptions. Now, the official rules are it has to have 15 or more cards, and it's singleton, which means uh, no duplicates. You cannot have more than one of any given contraption. Now, both of those rules completely fly out the window if you're drafting this set, which is what most people are going to do. Then I believe you can have repeats, I think uh, that was a rule, and you don't have to hit 15. So, um, basically, if you draft it, throw it in. And, you know, you guys know that if you draft five copies of the same card, you can throw it in your main deck. So, you know, violating the rules on limits is pretty much what you do in Sealed. Um, so whichever way you're playing, just go along with that. And then it basically just sits next to your library and it's library number two, pretty much. It's just deck number two. Uh, and then when you, um, I want to say construct, they, they used a different term. Oh yeah. Assemble. When you assemble a contraption, um, you basically just take the top card off your contraption deck and, you know, show it to everybody face up, reveal it, whatever. And then you put it onto the battlefield directly under one of these three sprockets. Um, so if I were to draw, um, uh, which one do I have? Here we go. Genetic Recombinator. I'd say, oh, let's put it on sprocket number one. And by the way, when you start the game, you start with a counter on sprocket number three. Hey guys, guess what I'm using for a counter? You already know it. Just, I, I don't even need to know. Of course. Um, so basically I probably would put, um, a, a, a contraption that I want to activate really soon on, th uh, one, because it starts the game on three, and then, as the little card token thing says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a contraption, move the crank counter to the next sprocket and crank any number of that sprocket's contraptions, and then one follows three. So you start, whoops, you start on three, and then boom, you go to one. So, okay, beginning of my upkeep, I own one contraption, cool. So I go to sprocket number one, and then I may activate the ability on uh, whatever contraption is there, if you were to use more common magic terminology. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it basically is just an activated ability. I mean, if you treat it that way, that's what it is. So this one, you know, Genetic Recombinator says whenever you crank, in other words, activate the ability of Genetic Recombinator, up to two target creatures each get plus two, plus two until end of turn. Then you go to your draw step, then you go to your main phase. So, you know, there it is. It's just like a free little spell. You could maybe consider it an, an emblem or like, I don't know, basically what it is, an artifact. Uh, and they are actually artifacts. So if you have a card that says destroy target artifact, you can target your opponent's contraptions. If you have one that says destroy all artifacts, oh boy, I mean, that would be pretty devastating. Um, the only catch is when these are destroyed, they do not go back to... Uh, the contraption deck, they and they also don't go to the graveyard, and they also don't just vaporize because they're like tokens. They're actually, you know, permanents. Um, they go to the scrapyard, which is a dedicated contraption graveyard. So I know two decks, two graveyards, oh, so complicated. Not really. I mean, if you're like, oh, what's this pile? Well, just look down. It's borderless, and it says contraption. I mean, there it is. Uh, so you don't have a limit on what you can put where. Um, when If it says construct uh, BB gun... You could just stack her right up, whoops, layering, stack her right up on one, and then, um, you know, every time you come around to one, you just absolutely dogpile them, basically. In fact, dogpile, let's throw the dog snail on there. Oh, I got the ordering wrong, there we go. Um, the problem is, if you read it, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a contraption, move the crank counter to the next sprocket. So the next turn, two, great, I get nothing, and then three, Okay, I still get nothing. And then the third turn, boom, back to one, and you can activate all three of these, or just two of them, or one of them, or I assume none of them. Um, I mean, I haven't seen the ruling on that, but that's what it sounds like. Or you could do a little bit more logical thing and, uh, you know, whoops, go one, two, three. I really should have labeled these layers. <laughs> Bad Photoshoppery right here. Uh, so then you can just go boom, 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 and you just get activated abilities, basically, every single upkeep. Um, and they said, you know, some of these kind of flow where it's like, oh, first you remove a creature and then you gain life. 
I don't know how those two go together, but you know, and, and these all have different abilities. You guys have seen the spoiler video. Uh, if you haven't go watch it. Um, so that's basically just how it works. And then if they destroy it, well, okay, it's gone. Now I don't get anything on sprocket number three. So if you're really sick of BB gun, you could destroy that one. And then, oh, look, it just happens to be next. Or if you don't like BB gun, but you think, well, I'm probably going to win in, in, you know, three turns because it'll be one, two, three, and then it's back. I'm just sick of dog snail engine because it gains them life. So you destroy dog snail engine and then boom, they get to their upkeep and they can't activate anything. Um, there may or may not be a mechanic or a card that lets them move a contraption to a different sprocket. Uh, maybe. Otherwise, you know, if there's an empty sprocket or two are overloaded and that's not the way they want to play, the next time that they construct a card, it'll probably go on number three. So, um, you know, just whatever. So just think about, you know, the future and plan ahead and all that. It adds like a, a complicated but still kind of simple dynamic to the game. And I just, I love it. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it's like all these new zones and stuff, but once you get it, you get it. And I mean, as long as you got the table space, just set the cards wherever you want, pretty much. I mean, space is going to be the only problem, really. Now a couple little minute details, ruling-esque stuff. Um, basically, they can activate in any order. It's not the order that you constructed them on. It's not the order that they're like stacked on top of each other. You can do them in any order. You can. It's it's considered a simultaneous ability, like a triggered ability, and so they can go on the stack in any order because you're the controller of the permanents. Also, it's really good to remember that um, when you land on, whoops, we'll say number one. You don't have to uh, crank or basically activate the ability of Genetic Recombinator if you don't want to. Um, that is perfectly optional, but at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a contraption, you must move the crank counter to the next bracket. That is not optional at all. And of course, remember, do not put these cards in your graveyard. If they get destroyed, they go to the scrapyard. Uh, I have a feeling that cards are going to interact with the scrapyard, like bring a contraption back from the scrapyard, or if you have five or more in the scrapyard, then do this or whatever. And even if they don't, I think just keeping them out of the graveyard was like a quantity of cards in the graveyard kind of thing, or then, I don't know, there's some kind of interaction there maybe, I don't know. It's not like any of these are legal in any kind of real format anyway. So I don't think I left anything out, but um, the, the one thing that a lot of people are going to ask is, where do you get this right here, this wonderful little um, sprocket card, I guess? Uh, apparently this is the card back of all of the contraptions, all three of these right here. Um, so if you flip one over, this is what you get. Now the problem with that is, I, I guess you have to have a reject one to use, and then you got to remember not to like ever flip it. I mean, that just seems weird. So it, well, it is singleton. So, I mean, if you had two copies of dog snail engine, I guess you could flip one over and use it as the sprocket counter. Otherwise you don't really need it. You could just have three zones and just like move the actual counter between them. Like one, two, three, just three piles, whatever. Um, I don't think they refer to the number itself. That That's when it would be nice to have labels. Um, but otherwise, if you really don't want to mess up and, you know, don't want to accidentally end up with two copies of BB gun in your, um, in your scrapyard or your, uh, contraption library, then you could just take two really like low value, you know, non mythic ones would be nice <laughs> like dog snail engine and, uh, just glue them together face to face. And then on both sides, it would be, uh, this little gray thing here. I mean, seems like a solution to me, I guess. And, uh, I don't know, you, you could just, like, sleeve it a, a third color and then, you know, sleeve the contraptions a second color and then your library a first color. Just whatever, whatever you want. Leave them unsleeved or glue them together. Or make your own giant version of this and print it on 85-pound poster board paper. You know, I really underestimated the amount of arts and crafts that go into Magic the Gathering. Anyway, uh, if there are any additional questions, I guarantee you I don't have the answers to them, but um, we'll probably have them come up in some kind of Q&A thing or a guide or whatever in the next couple days from Wizards. So uh, watch their website, watch their social media, and I will see you guys next video.